Okay, in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to cell respiration. And the first thing that I'm going to do is talk about biochemical pathways. So we had done biochemical pathways a few class period ago, um, or at least you had the lesson primer on biochemical pathways a few, th a few days ago. And so there's a couple of things I want to um, go over with you. Number one, these biochemical pathways are controlled by enzymes. Now, typically what you're going to see on the AP exam is another word, regulated. Regulated is just another word for controlled. So biochemical pathways are regulated or controlled by enzymes. And there's no fixed magic number for um, the number of enzymes in each biochemical pathway. So some of the biochemical pathways we talk about are going to have 10 enzymes, some have two, some have five. It just depends. The second thing I want to remind you all about these biochemical pathways is that they can be entered at any point within the pathway itself. Entered at any point. Um, so let's say, for example, you have um, enzyme 1, okay, and it makes a product that goes to enzyme 2, that goes to enzyme 3, that goes to enzyme 4, okay, and each of these makes a product that becomes the substrate for the next enzyme. Well, if for whatever reason in the environment you suddenly had an influx or a lot of whatever product is for this, then what's going to happen is the, uh, uh, the biochemical pathway will continue moving from this point forward. So if you have an influx of a product from enzyme 2, it's not going to convert, get converted back to substrate 1 for enzyme 1. It's just going to start here and move forward from this point right here. The last thing that I'm going to remind you all about biochemi biochemical pathways is that they can be allosterically inhibited. That means that one of the products or even the final product of a biochemical pathway can bind to the allosteric side of the first enzyme. So let's say the product of enzyme 4 binds allosterically to the, the to alloceric side of enzyme 1 and can turn off the entire pathway um, if enough of the product has been made. Now, in these biochemical pathways, you have some cofactors and coenzymes that are going to help the enzymes do their job. And one of the most important ones that we are going to talk about when we're talking about cell respiration is uh, the, co the coenzyme NAD+. So what, it's, what coenzyme or what NAD+, is going to do is help with the oxidation and reduction processes that are going to happen in between these steps. So reduction is the name of the process or is the name of, of, of what happens when we say something gains an electron. And so remember that electrons are negatively charged. Oxidation is what happens when something, a molecule, loses an electron. And helping in this process of oxidation and reduction, gaining and losing electrons, you're going to have a very important coenzyme that's going to help this process. So in its oxidized form, it is NAD+. And when it gains the electron, not only is it going to gain the electron, it's also going to gain a proton. And so this becomes NADH. And this process is reversible. What you need to be able to do is tell me, um, is, um, is NAD plus, when NAD plus gains the hydrogen, it is reduced. So I'm going to put an R for reduced. And when NADH loses the electron, it's called oxidation. So I'm going to put an O there to help remind you. This is very vocabulary specific. If on an FRQ you simply say NAD plus becomes NADH, we count it wrong. You have to use the correct terminology. NAD plus is reduced to NADH, 
and NADH is oxidized back to NADH plus. So please get familiar with these two terms because um, you've got to use them in your FRQs. You can't have reduction without oxidation occurring as well. Both of these must occur at the same time. If something is gaining an electron, it's going to gain it from something else. Something else is losing that electron. Okay, so when we talk about cell respiration, we're going to be talking about making ATP, and there's two overall pathways we are going to be looking at. The first is the one that you're probably familiar with, and that is aerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, it needs oxygen. So oxygen is going to act as what we call the final electron acceptor. Then the opposite to this is anaerobic respiration. And in anaerobic respiration, the final electron acceptor is something other than oxygen. And we're going to be focusing on anaerobic respiration when the final electron acceptor is an organic molecule. And that's called fermentation. But again, we define it as that final electron acceptor and by the way, you're going to see me write E minus. It's kind of a sloppy E. E minus, that means electron. So anytime you see me writing E minus, it means electron. And so in anaerobic respiration, that final electron acceptor is something other than oxygen. It's going to be something else. And we'll talk about what the products of anaerobic respiration are and why these processes are so important. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.